Being a pharaoh was extremely challenging and demanding. This was more than just a job. It had massive implications and it always showed that yes, it would be very hard for you to make a difference between actually having a personal life and controlling the country. These things intertwined more often than not, and it was a massive challenge to deal with. But the truth is that being a pharaoh definitely had its perks too. For a lot of pharaohs, they didn't really have to do anything, as everything was basically served to them on a platter. It was amazing, and it showed the true power that you would have as a ruler of an entire country. What type of life did a pharaoh have? Even better, what would you do during a regular day? Let's find out. The beginning of a day. Whether you believe it or not, the life of a pharaoh was actually very well structured. That meant every simple bit of a day had its own meaning and requirements. Which was great for a pharaoh because not only would you have stuff to do, but you also had people creating the schedule and assisting you with the completion of most tasks. The day of a pharaoh began with him getting cleaned and dressed by servants. Yes, as a pharaoh you didn't really have to do anything as servants were there to assist with all of your needs. One of the servants was actually the one focused on finding the right scented oils and pastes that would be used to rub the pharaoh. That was their only job. After the pharaoh was cleaned, then he was dressed. Just like the bathing and cleaning process, everything was prepared well beforehand by the servants. The pharaoh would just come into the room and a group of servants brought the clothes. On top of that, he also was adorned with lots and lots of jewelry. The idea behind this was the ruler owns a lot of gold, so he needs to look the part in an appropriate manner, which was exactly the main thing to take into consideration. Once the cleaning and dressing processes were completed, the pharaoh had to go to the audience chamber. This was the place where he had to perform the daily meetings. Guests were coming to him in order to talk about their requirements and the problems they encountered during the day. Once they come to that room, they had to prostrate in front of the ruler. He was seen as a divine being, while others were regular mortals. These meetings took place with generals, ambassadors, and many others. Special envoys from the empire came to talk about their own issues. Then generals were coming to discuss military tasks. On top of that, the ambassadors were coming to offer tributes from other countries. So the beginning of the day was quite full for the pharaoh since he had a lot of meetings. Once the audiences were done, the pharaoh was going to the temple. Even if you were the ruler, you still had to pay tribute to Amun-Ra. The thing is that the ruler could actually lose the divine rights if he didn't pay his own tribute. What would happen? According to myths, the pharaoh would descend into chaos he would be responsible for any problems that would arise. This was a crucial thing to take into account and one of the most important tasks during the day. The way this would happen is the high priest would go with the pharaoh into the sanctuary. They would smell the incense and cool air. Then the ruler would go to the statue of Amun-Ra where he would ask questions and then receive answers via the high priest. The pharaoh would then receive a large bull that the sacred butcher would sacrifice to the gods. The process was repeated every day, and it's a true testament to the beliefs that people had during that time. Afternoon Tasks After the pharaoh took part in all those tasks, he was ready for lunch. The lunch was different usually, as the pharaoh had a very specific diet, yet he was allowed to try out a variety of new things. Needless to say, all foods and things were prepared beforehand, so the pharaoh received his food every day at the same hour. Of course, in the background, there was a lot of fuss when it came to preparing the right food. One thing to note about the diet of a pharaoh, and Egyptians in general, is the fact that their diet was mostly comprised out of fish, fruits, and veggies. They didn't eat a lot of meat from land animals, as some of them were considered sacred. So even if the regular diet wasn't as varied as other civilizations, they were eating very healthily during that time. That's especially true for the ruler, which had all meals prepared with the best possible ingredients that could be found on the market at that time. Once the meal was completed, 
the pharaoh would go and explore the city in a dedicated tour with the royal chariot. The thing to keep in mind here is that not everyone knew what the pharaoh would look like. Crowds were gathered to see the ruler, so the simple fact of him browsing a city was pretty much a festival for the people during that time. It just shows the true importance that a ruler had during that time, and how much importance he had for the entire society. There were massive crowds coming just to see their ruler and congratulate him for a job well done. However, the pharaoh didn't just go and browse the city for no reason. He did have different tasks, such as visiting construction sites where a variety of buildings were constructed to honor him. He was also surrounded by bodyguards, obviously, as it was extremely important for everyone to keep the ruler safe and away from any possible problems that might arise. Simply put, every part of the day was very well structured to ensure that the pharaoh would be able to go everywhere he needed. But there was a lot of downtime too, which a lot of pharaohs actually enjoyed. In fact, right after the city tour and visiting the construction sites, the ruler was able to just browse his gardens and stay within his palace at his own leisure. This was great because it added a lot of comfort and great benefits. It's an incredible thing to see, and the payoff itself was nothing short of staggering for him. Evening Activities The last duties of the day for the pharaoh took place during the late moments of the afternoon. What he had to do was return to the temple. Here, there was a ceremony designed to mark the sun setting and a day coming to its end. It was quite an interesting thing, and the ceremony itself was pretty short. So, there were no things like rushing the process or anything like that. In fact, in many situations, it was a great way to unwind while also honoring the gods and the assistance and help they provided to the ruler during the day. This was the last activity that the pharaoh had during the day. It was pretty much all that he needed to do. Once the ceremony was over, the pharaoh was able to go and enjoy a good night's sleep. Some pharaohs continued with a few tasks, while others went directly to sleep. As you can imagine, this schedule was modified according to every pharaoh. Even if there was predefined tasks for the pharaoh, the truth is that each one tried to place his own mark, and you will find notices about specific pharaohs having more palace-focused tasks. Some of them barely went outside the palace. They had specific servants that were tasked with doing those things. So there were specific adjustments based on the needs of the ruler. It was interesting to see the way all these things would come together and the amazing features brought to the table. Conclusion It's amazing to see how packed the day of a pharaoh was during those times. Of course, every pharaoh managed to customize his tasks and day to some degree. But it's still amazing to see that despite all the power, the ruler still had a specific daily routine to follow. Managing such a massive empire was not an easy thing to do, and it all came down to having specific servants that he would delegate the tasks to. The fact that the entire ruling process was so well structured is amazing, and it goes to show the true power that a pharaoh had during that time.